Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to this very special episode of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing, with our honorable special guest, Miss Leah Nicole. What's up? And we are here to vibe with our tribe and let you know about this wonderful woman and the amazing things she is currently doing and will be doing in the world that we reside. So So I just want to hop in right quick before you two go on with your little girlfriend. <laughs> you girlfriend know moment and I'm and I'm totally like an obsolete uh, for this episode. So we told you guys we weren't playing. We said we were gonna have guests, so we had uh, little brother Alan on last week. We're at Lee and Nicole in the building this week. We'll have another guest next week, another guest after that, and another guest, and then our new baby, our new baby. Will yes. be maternity so leave. we'll be we'll be done. So it'll be maternity leave vibes, and we'll be out of here for uh, probably a couple months. I think yeah. from babies due October, November. I think we'll come back after the new year. So maybe like February, you might start seeing new episodes. We might do a New Year's Eve pop-in vibe. Nah, no. I'm, I'm, He's not feeling it. No, no. <laughs> not we'll do some Instagram live vibes. Maybe some IG live vibes, which we haven't really done yet. So maybe we'll we'll muster up the courage to start doing that. But yeah, go ahead. I'll let you get back into your thing, and I'll just watch the crosstalk. No, please, you, come on, please please interject and, and speak. I'm just, I'm just here. Though, I'm drinking so, my drinking my bourbon. So last <laughs> week, his his he's our family friend, but. He's from David's side. Mm -hmm. um, Alan was in here, so I was I was just sitting over here in the corner, and they would like go off on like some tangent about college or something yeah. random, and I was just like, so, like I need to use the bathroom. Like, am I really needed? If I slip away, will anybody notice? It's all right, if I go, so please, please join us. Include. Nope. So I'll, I'll pop in here and there. <laughs> so I was blessed to meet Leah. November of 2020. Man. Has and it, it, it's not even a full year that wow. I've known you, but it feels like I've known you so much longer. Uh, we, I think we've, we've talked about me attending the, the In Touch retreat. I, the very first retreat I went to, Leah happened to be there, and we just... Just click. Yeah. She's got one of those personalities, presence that you, you gravitate to. Uh, and if you don't, there's probably something that you need to work on. <laughs> <laughs> don't do them like that. <laughs> uh, so I was just like, wow, I really like her. I just, and I think I even said, I was like, I like you. Like something about, I like you. Uh, come to find out we've got like random people Connection that, points. That, that interlock us and connect us. So it, it's just amazing. But her, she is just a gifted woman. Thank you. And, and the way she communicates and delivers messages and works it has God working through her and orchestrates it's amazing and it blows me away every single time thank you so I one we appreciate that you took the time out of your life to come in and bless our little what? podcast and, and have conversation with us that's not you guys say little podcast like is no, this is no, this is like real deal. Bless like, our, po our large yeah. podcast. I have a whole Just microphone. Our, our like, podcast. Bless our podcast. Yeah, a little, little podcast. <laughs> With your presence, um, and so I, I just appreciate that. Yeah. But I don't even know where to begin with you because we, even before we started recording, I was saying there's so many layers to you and so many avenues that we could go, but there's no real starting point. And the, yeah, you, you pick a place and I'll start. So let's let's name off some of the things that. That Leah does, um, and some maybe some of the things that she's building, working toward. Okay, so, so okay, there we go. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's, what, I'm, that's, what, that's what I'm here so, for. You're here for. That's that's what what so here you for. refer to yourself as the disrupt, yeah, disruptive coach. Yeah, disruptive life coach. Yeah. Disruptive life coach. Mm -hmm. How did we go? What is a disruptive life coach? What is a life coach? That's all good questions. Let's just start there. Um, Life coaches are coaches that help with people's lives in all different ways, right? So there are people that focus in on confidence or self-esteem or business or general success. Um, and then you have me. <laughs> uh, that I think my, what I always tell people, people are like, well, what is a disruptive life coach? What does that even mean? Um, and usually when you hear the term disruptor, 
that don't sound all that great, right? right? Um, but I really believe that I'm called and been gifted to um, dig into people's soil and uproot things that were never meant to be there, like seeds that were planted a long time ago that were never meant to be in their foundation. Um, hopefully plant truth and then help them to produce the fruit that they were always meant to bear. I believe that like a lot of people don't really believe that they were created on purpose and for a purpose and with purpose in them. And so because of my faith and because of what I love doing with people is helping to uncover what it is that they are created to do and hopefully keep them free because we got to meet people that are bound mm -hmm. and I ain't got time for it. And so that's what I do in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. But mostly I work with mostly women. Um, I got a couple of fellas that have reached out and said, yo, we need to talk, fam. Mm -hmm. I said, let's do that. <laughs> um, but I, I really just enjoy helping people get unstuck, unchained because we got work to do. There's something for you to do. Have you always wanted to be a life coach? Is that something that... No. Were you coached and you were inspired? Get girl. Yes. Thank God for... Listen, you know when uh, there are certain people that come in your world and you're like, if you didn't come into my world, I would not... That's my husband. Don't don't mind him, okay? I apologize. That should have been on mute. So the disruptive uh, husband. Sorry. Right. Sorry. Disruptive husband. Actually, yeah, that's that's how I got my name. We'll come to, back to that. Remind me <laughs> on that part. Um, no, but my, my first real investment in my own personal growth was with a woman named Kelly Brock. Shout out, sis. This is for you. She um, literally unlocked me in ways that I had never been. I never saw myself the way that she had seen me. And she said one thing that like, messed me up she's like you know you have the permission to change right like hmm. that one statement yeah you know that you have the permission to change and i think the fact that she used the word permission knowing that i'm a military kid coming from two marines as parents been raised in the church all my life so my dad's also a pastor so you got rules and structure and and guidelines and boundaries everywhere and I lived by the, these rules and needed structure and had all these different things. And she's like, you know, you have permission to change and become whatever it is that you want to be. And I was like, no, nah, bro, what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> right. And when she she talked to me about um, having anxiety, what it means to be a perfectionist and where that really comes from, um, she unlocked my my need for control and was like, you know that like that need for control is really a sense of um, you're scared. You're scared that it's all going to fall apart if you don't do something. And she's like, so you say you're a believer. Do you really believe that he, he's got you covered? Or do you think um, that you got to figure it all out and then tap tag him in when, when you can't do it? That was me probably about five years ago. And then the process began. And so she was the first person to really get me to understand that I had the ability one, to command a room with my voice, that I had the ability to see beyond the mask of most people. Mm -hmm. We all wear masks, right? We all have a representative. And that's uh, sometimes a good thing because everybody can't handle everything, right? But um, I, I didn't know that I had the gift and ability to help people to peel back the layers so they could really see themselves for who they really were and or who they really are. Um, and so... That was where the process began. So, no, I wasn't thinking about becoming a coach at all. I was trying to figure out my own life and then realized that I had some gifts and talents. And she was like, you know that you could do this easily. In fact, she pointed out that I had been doing it. I was working in higher education. That's a whole other part of my life. But, yeah, yeah, that's where it all began. And then I, I made a decision <laughs> and did something different and changed. And I'm, I'm still doing it. That's where I am. So at what point, was there a pivotal moment where you thought, I need coaching, or I, I'm i not satisfied with where I am, oh, I yeah. am what I am? Uh, it wasn't that I needed coaching. I felt like I just needed, I needed help. And it was hard for me to even admit that, like being the perfectionist, wearing the mask for a very long time. I was like... um, I don't need help. I got this covered. And I had been so good at perfecting my mask, perfecting the paint that I wore. 
And I remember coming home one day and, you know, you know, um, like sometimes if you get up in the morning and you uh, are kind of dreading the day and all the things that are on your your to do list for that day, yeah. you wake up in the morning, you're like, <sighs> OK, yeah. here we go. Right. Like as if working or waking up and going into your day was took a lot of effort. Yeah. I did that in the morning one day and I was like, man, that is not, I don't like this feeling. And then I came home and I realized that when I came home, I felt like all the, the stress of the day, I could release it finally. And I was like, this feeling of waking up anxious and not really, or dreading the day yeah. and then coming home and feeling like I can finally breathe because I'm away from the world again. I said, this can't be it. This, this can't be how life operates. There's got to be some. I need to talk to somebody now. This was before going to therapy was 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 a thing, <laughs> right? Especially for yeah. black people. Let's be all the way clear. Um, especially for black Christian people in church, they say, mm-hmm. "Call Jesus. You need that's, Jesus. That's, who, all, that's you need. all you need. Pray. Call him on the that's hotline. Call, call, right. Call him up. Yeah. Tell him what you want. Right." <laughs> And I was like, yes, Jesus is great. Just throw, some, I, just throw some holy oil right, on right. some holy water. Yeah, yeah. Rub it in. Just, just pray yeah. was the word. Yeah. And I was like, and that's not helping me. I need to talk to somebody. Um, but I, it was that at that moment. Oh, there's a couple moments. Oh, I'm being reminded of a couple things. This is good. I haven't <laughs> reflected on this in a minute. But like that was one moment where my morning and my d- ending of my day felt like work, felt like weight. Mm-hmm. And then I was in this relationship, Jess, David, oh. I was doing things for this man and becoming everything that he desired me to be. I gained, I want to say 40 pounds for this man because he wanted me a little thicker. How'd you, how'd you go about doing that? Was it just, come like, on, eat, we eat um, some good food now. Like Ben and Jerry's? Don't move. Like, ben and not Jerry's. Even, no, no, no. Like soul food, like <laughs> oh, collard okay. greens and cornbread. cornbread, yeah. cornbread and it's that bread. Listen, and I love a good roll. Okay. Yeast rolls. Anyway, let's not get there. Um, but I had gained, I was living in this. I was living in this relationship, and becoming everything he needed me to be. And it was at the point where I thought he was about to ask me to marry him. I was like, because we had been talking about it. Yeah. I was, you know, I was like, okay, this is happening. And then I really sat down and thought, if this man asked me, I don't know if I have the courage to say no because I know. I don't want to be this person that he is creating me to be the housewife, the girl that stays home and has all the kids and doesn't work and isn't ambitious. And not that he necessarily said those things, but it made me feel like that. Right. Like he planned out our, all of our lives and like how we operate as a couple. And I used to look at that as leadership because I didn't know who I was. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it was in that relationship. And I was like, if he asked me to marry him, will I have enough strength to say no? I don't think so. And then I'm going to be married to this man and I'm going to be living a life that ain't really for me. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I walked away. I walked away and my family was like, oh, that's big. Because we had been in for two and a half years, I think. How tough was it for you to walk away? Was it tough at all? Or was it like, because you mean you'd created his, like, you know, like on video games, you can create a player. Like he created a a wife or, or significant other in you. So you're literally a product of this man's vision of excuse me yeah you know the perfect match or perfect for me for him so and was it was it was that a tough decision for you to walk away like did it ooh, take it took some it took yeah. a, a couple of conversations with myself because just as he was creating me in some ways i had dreamt of being with a man like him right and mm. so in some ways he was becoming or he was showing me that these are the things i wanted like i wanted to be taken care of i didn't want to have to work i wanted to be a housewife sure. i thought right and then i realized no i actually have dreams i actually have desires and they're not just to be at home i've said all these things because it's what i've seen but i actually want to do something different and that's when i was like okay i gotta figure out how to get out it was hard and I, I don't, people pleasing was another area that I had to get through. And so I didn't want to hurt him, but I knew I was cause I'd also talked to his mama and been like, I'm never going to hurt your son. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it was, it was a process, a lot of personal conversations with myself. When I had the conversation, I had to do the extreme, no, like cut off, yeah, cold, no, turkey. So, cold turkey, yeah. like rip, 
all of it. Cut all ties, right? Social media, phone number. I wasn't going to change my number because you ain't going to make me change my number for mm-hmm. nobody, okay? Okay? But um, it was it was the process of saying no and, like, no, no. All the way no. And it took a good two or three months for me to move from that place. You go through a cycle of depression. You yeah. you question every decision. Um, you go through the, the lies in your head that, oh, my God, you're going to be alone for the rest of your life. What if no one ever comes after this, right? Um, and then the process of learning how to just love me began. Mm-hmm. And in that process, that's when I started to ask for help and started to find out that I could actually create the life I wanted if mm-hmm. I chose to do something different. And I just had to decide to do it. And that's how we get here, right? You asked me about the name Disruptor, and I wanted to go back to you that. Because your husband, my husband. Called. Yep. He's the one that Clarity, gave... not the man that she was just talking about. Yeah, she, yeah. She's... Listen. <laughs> All the way clear. Just want to make not to the make man sure. that I was talking about. This man. So was I have a question though? Because so yeah, was sure. he? Um, was it was it a toxic relationship? Was he taking um, advantage of you willingly, knowingly, or was it just no? He he you, loved you me. Kind of complimented each other, right? Like he needed someone to kind of conform to what his vision of uh, a oh, wife would be, like, and you oh. needed someone, I guess, at that time because you didn't really know who you were. Needed someone to kind of take sir. that lead and show you. So. I just the reason I asked the question is because a lot of times when we we hear stories or at least myself we hear stories about how relationships don't work we think that oh it was it, that it must have been toxic or nope. it must have been hard on you yeah. like there can be like to to someone on the outside looking in relationships that are going fine you get along you you have you share interests there's yeah. no like I'm at your neck you're at mine but it's still not healthy and it's important I think I'm hearing in, in my mind, I'm thinking like, it's, I'm so glad you're telling this because it's important for people to really truly assess the relationships in their end because on the surface, it may seem like, yeah, this is, this is fine. We don't fight. We get yeah. along, you know, I do whatever he wants and he's happy. He doesn't yell or vice versa, Yeah, but that may not necessarily be the relationship for you. So I'm glad that you're here sitting with us and that you were able to, to realize that because, you know, that would have been a, from what I'm hearing, that would have been a terrible waste of a uh, life car disruptive life coach not not being you know who they are so yeah no you hit the nail on the head we had a great time it yeah. was he was not abusive it what he was actually really encouraging um he supported me in everything i wanted i didn't know me yeah and i think uh, the biggest thing is like when you don't know yourself and you're in relationship with someone that does right when they know who they are they know what they want mm-hmm. and you don't their encouragement, their enthusiasm about life and what they dream up, you are it's easy to fall into yeah. that and say, I can see that. Yes, let's do it. And it wasn't until I looked at myself in the mirror and I had gained all this weight. The reason I gained the weight was because I really was a, really a lot skinnier. <laughs> um, and uh, it was a desire of his because he was a football player, really big guy, solid. Um, and he was from the South. And, you know, down South, we got curves thicker than a snicker, cold grits, mm-hmm. right? Like, <laughs> come on. I, I, look, I, I can't say anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, no, that's you can't. My, that's yeah, my you type. Can't. You know I see it. No, I, come on now. It better be because right. <laughs> we, we in yeah. here. Let's be no, but let's not, let's not just blame men, all right? Because grandma's. From the south, been trying to pump. Listen, they've been yeah. trying to pump, been try, been trying to pump us up for yes. years. Exactly. Like, I had you need to eat. I was skinny, and my grandma would go to my mom and be like, Just "Put some meat on that." Why bone. aren't you feeding her? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, is she, are you punishing her? Like, she was so concerned. So, yeah, yes, he you're right, right, sir. Absolutely. But it was his confidence and his awareness of himself, and my lack of awareness that I fell right into. Not even I fell. I chose to be a part of a vision because mm-hmm. he had a vision. And I said yes to that vision until I realized I actually had a different vision. Mm. And was I brave enough to say no to this and say yes to me? Yeah. It took courage. Scary as all get out. But if I hadn't done it, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't have met the man of my dreams. Not even the man of my dreams. I didn't even know I could dream of the man I'm with. Mm. Um because God is uh, is really, really good at bringing the person that's going to bring you to another level and stretch you in ways that you never thought imaginable um, for your betterment. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, I had to come to the realization I was in a relationship with a man that knew who he was and I didn't. Mm-hmm. And I was still searching for myself while in it. So no, the relationship was great. 
no, we we didn't argue. It wasn't like we just we had a good time. He loves football. I love football. He loves good music. I love good music. We love good food. Hello, I gained forty pounds, mm -hmm. right? But at the end of the day, I realized that there were some things that I was doing again to become what people needed. This comes from being a military kid and moving around a lot and being able to shift and become whoever I wanted at every new school, right? I was Nikki at one school, Nicole at another school, Leah at one school. I made up a name at one school. My name was Dee Dee. But any, anyway, that's a whole other story. We're not going to go there. Go, gonna go <laughs> there. Your story is really relatable. Uh, and your, your follow-up question was good because I've been... In, in a similar situation. Thank you for, for giving me props on my follow-up question. I appreciate <laughs> it. You're very welcome. Appreciate Where you. Where I've babe. leached onto someone else's life because I, I didn't know myself. Yeah. And I don't know that. And I, again, this was late teens, early 20s. Mm -hmm. So it's like how. This is before, before David. Before David. To be clear. Um, <laughs> how, and I guess I'm trying to like hearing your story. I'm thinking back and I'm like. How did this person know themselves? We were the, we were about the same age. How did he know himself? Uh, and I didn't know myself. And I was able... Granted, I think for me personally, there were toxic elements that helped me recognize I needed to walk away mm -hmm. to eventually walk... Into. Into his line of vision. Leap. leap. And that's leap. A, leap. Jump, she sir. Leapt. She leapt. She, she saw me. Was she, she was so, like, it was a strong. Pump, pump, your, pump your brakes. Uh, <laughs> but I had like, I had leached myself to somebody yeah. who was like, I'm I'm going to become president. I'm going to go into politics. So I'm telling myself, okay, you know, I'm just going to do this college thing. I'm going to become. Yeah, fit the dream. A, a, a political why I don't like politics. I, As you can tell, I'm not, I don't have the demeanor to, to not Neither. put a political husband in some kind of shambles <laughs> like <laughs> i will say something yeah. and get somebody in trouble but it's right. like yeah. you you leech but i can say i i start to recognize the toxic traits and that's why but it's like hearing that no he was were good yeah no we were good so yeah. for that what advice would you give to a woman or a man because this can happen in in reverse order sure. yeah who yeah. doesn't know themselves how do you even know if you don't know yourself Oh, that's a good question. Because you can align yourself with someone and then, you know, sometimes it takes you're married with kids and a house and you look back and you're just like, what? Yeah. So it's like, what? And I, it's such a loaded question that I'm no, asking. No, I, like, I hear the question. What advice would you, how would you, to like, is there a moment you're supposed to reflect and make sure that like, do, like, do I know thyself? Listen, and that's the question. If you're like, how do you know yourself? When you can answer the question, who are you? Mm. And you don't answer with what you do. When you answer the question, hey, who are you? And your answer isn't, oh, I'm a mom. I work at this school. I, um, I do this nonprofit work, right? Or I'm a part of this organization. Mm. Yeah, that's all great. But who are you? Mm. When you can answer that question about who you are at your core. Mm -hmm. What do you value? What do you want to leave on this earth? What kind of impact do you want to make? Like, I, if you can't answer the question of who you are, not what you do, what you like to do even. I, I like music. That's great. That's not who you are, though. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? And so when you can answer that question, I think that that's when you know yourself. And yes, what you said is that it requires reflection. Most people don't take, listen, we, oh, we live in a fast paced world and mm -hmm. it's only getting faster. And so to keep up with everybody and all the things and all the technologies, you've got to be on go. And that's why our society, I believe, is full of people that have attention deficit disorder, whether it's diagnosed or not, because mm -hmm. there's just so much stimuli yeah. happening at all times that we don't know how to slow down. We don't know how to sit still. We don't know how to just, to do this, this is beautiful to me. Yeah. Beautiful to me to sit down and just vibe with people, good people, good conversation, good drinks, like good food, whatever the case may be, but be able to slow down long enough to just be mm. and not be thinking what's next. Mm -hmm. True. Like I'm here in this moment, in this conversation, not thinking about what I got to do after, not thinking about what I'm going to wear tomorrow for church. Am I going to church? Cause I'm tired. Like I'm not there. I'm here. Most people don't know how to do that alone, let alone with other people, let alone sit with themselves. Mm -hmm. mm. 
and not have their mind spiraling to the next. So I think in order for people to get to the place where they actually understand how to answer that question, it requires a self-discipline. It requires intentionality. It requires a willingness to say no to something else so that you can say yes to you. And most of us are doing everything we can for everyone else because we don't know how to do for us. Mm -hmm. Because if we actually sat down to do for us, we wouldn't know what to do. That right there. Wow. Yo, so that was, that was, that was good. That was very good. That was, um, I think that's a good place to stop because cool. we need to take a break. Um, but I just feel like that's a really good note to end on. So um, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more from uh, from Miss Leah. Cool. Yep. Okay. We're back. Oh, we're recording. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm sorry. I'll cut take, it out. Yeah, please cut that out. <laughs> I'll, 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 <laughs> Nobody needs to know that. Uh, yeah. So we left off on such a deep note. So I, the follow-up question that I had for you regarding... Yeah. Knowing thyself, mm -hmm. so we're just gonna. That's just the. I that's like gonna that. be the theme. <laughs> Should people who know themselves do they know when they're attached to someone who doesn't? I guess it's twofold. Are they being manipulated? Like, do they recognize that this person doesn't know themselves, so I can get them to align with mm. me, or? Should they stop and say, like, especially partnerships with relationships? Yeah. Should you say, like, do they even know who they are? Like, it's part of getting to know. And this, I don't even know if these questions make sense. No, they do. But, like, if you're dating someone yeah. and you happen to be the person who knows yourself, is it your responsibility or should you take responsibility to say, you know what? I'm dating this person. We've been together for so long. But, you know, they're a yes person or they agree with everything or they don't they don't have anything for them yeah there's a whole i'll have like six things that just ran through my head first the to answer both questions one i think both can happen right somebody can be manipulative and be like i know that they don't know themselves mm -hmm. and i do and so because i want to have control over someone absolutely they can just do that with a person that doesn't know themselves right a person that cares about personal growth for themselves and for the person that they're with, I would hope would encourage them to go do that work mm -hmm. in relationship or outside of it or take a break and do that. Right. But however they choose, I would hope that if you value it for you, that you would want that person to have that same revelation or that same awareness of themselves. Um, I think it becomes, in, it has to be an intentional decision. If you're going to say that this person is your life partner right? That your value, your core values are the same or have some vicinity, closeness, proximity to each other, right? Because if my core values and that person's core values don't align or are not parallel, then where are we going, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Which direction are we going if my, my values take me left and to the left bend and yours go left but then curve right at the tip, right? Like, where we end up will be in two different places if that isn't in alignment. And so I think a person has to be intentional if you're, especially if you're thinking lifelong partnership or even friendship, your circle, because your circle impacts where you go too. let's be clear. Like my dad always said this, um, and I didn't get it until, until I got it. But he said, um, I don't have to get to know you to know you. Mm -hmm. Give me your best five friends, the friends yeah. that you chill with. Give me, let me have an hour with them, and I know who you are. I know who you are and where you're going based on the people that you say are close to you. Because you can't get away from being impacted by the people you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. Period. Whether you recognize it or not, right? There will be some type of rub off, some type of um, impact, some type of seed planting because you're just... You're listening to them. You're doing what you do with them. Um, and if you're not solidified in who you are, you will shift based on the people that are around you. And that's a good thing or it can be a bad thing. Now, I have really great people around me that are doing great things and excelling and are way ahead of me in some ways. And then there are ways that I'm way ahead of them and we balance each other out and we push each other to grow and move. And that's healthy, right? That's good. So if, if my dad were to say, These are my, this is your crew, let me have a good talk with them. I'm like, yeah, please talk to them because you know 
when you talk to them, you're going to find out where I'm going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Watch this work. Watch us work. Because I'm proud of where they're going and I'm proud of where I am too. So I think it can be twofold. That's my thought on that. What do you What are you thinking? I see your mind. Your mind <laughs> like, I was is getting like. Ready to ask the question, but I feel like he's. No, got, go ahead. If you got uh, a question, so go ahead. let's circle back to Kay. your title. Cool. Um, the disruptive life coach. Mm-hmm. Where did that come from? So I was w- talking with my, one of my girls in my circle, and uh, she was excelling in different areas, and she was talking about getting a coach and talking about life coaching and all the things. And I was like, you know, I really. I really think that that's something I want to do, but I don't know what kind of coach I would be. I feel like I talk about empowering women. I think I talk about confidence building. Um, I think I do a lot of success, whatever, business, sure. So she gave me the assignment. She was like, Leah, go and reach out to 10 people that you know and ask them to, to describe you in three words and gather those words and then find the common thread or the common thing that comes out because whatever they're saying about you they know you right whatever they're saying is probably the type of coach that you tend to be right they all gave me different words whatever catalyst um a pusher you your confidence whatever cool and then i asked marcus i was dating him at the time we were just dating and i was like marcus i've got this assignment if you could describe me in three words, what would it be? He's like, I don't know. Knowing my husband, <laughs> he's always going against the grain. So he's like, I don't, I don't need three words. And I was right. like, just do, just give me the three mm-hmm. words. He's like, no, there's only one word to describe you. And I was like, okay, what is it? And at this point I'm like irritated. Cause you're not following yep. the rules of what yeah. I'm asking. <laughs> Come on, one job. Um, and he's like disruptor. I said, uh, huh. That actually, Okay, I ran it back by the other nine people, and they were like, "Exactly, that that sums it all up," and that's how we got here, because there wasn't a way for me to describe all the ways in which I shift people, foundationally shake people, but I do know that whenever I'm impacting someone, I'm moving stuff out the way. My dad used to call me a whirlwind growing up. I used to yeah. think he he's like Leah comes cool. in the room and you just shake the place up whether you mean to or not, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I used to hate that, not knowing that that was always a part of who I was. And so, yeah, that's how we got here, disruptive life coaching. <laughs> I'm a life coach. We're going to talk about anything in your life, but my job is to disrupt that foundation so that you get the right fruit to be bared. Like, that's that's the goal. I mean, it's necessary. And what? being a, a product of, <laughs> of, of the the disrupting <laughs> you're gonna be disrupted uh, but it, it's it's just interesting that how you received that because you could have taken that a whole different way like what you're trying to say i'm disruptive you try like are you are you what you trying to say you trying to shoot, because shoot it's shots. just human nature to get just dis- like defensive like, yeah who are you talking to what do you mean like right. i'm not this isn't me um so in comparison to so Adding that in front of the word life coach yeah. in comparison to life coach. And you've touched on it, but how would you say that differs? How would you say, like, because you could just be Leah Nicole, life, life coach. coach. Sure could. But that adjective of disruptive, yeah. why is that something that's so necessary? Yeah, that's such a good question, Jess. I don't even think I've ever been asked that because you're right. I could just say life coach. Mm-hmm all day the reason disruption or disruptor is important to me i i think uh there's too many times where in people's conversations our lives where we stay surface we stay at the top we don't go deeper as a disruptor, I can't stay on the mask level because I've worn a mask for too long and I understood what that looked like. And so then I said, okay, there's got to be more. I was like, oh, so that's cute. Let's move that out the way. That's nice. Sure. But that's not the truth. What I recognize that a, a disruption has to happen for change to happen. You don't move without there being some type of shift. Even if you're, simple example you're going to work out if you've never worked out you've got to figure out where you're going to work out 
if you're going to go somewhere, you got to figure out which routine you got to figure out why you're doing it and then figure out what you're going to eat. There's a whole bunch of things that change in order for that one thing to change or happen. Most people want to stay surface and don't want to do the work of figuring out all the different pieces that are necessary to make that movement happen. And that's where you get a disruptor to say, hey, that's cute. That's the desire. That's the goal. But how you get in there? What's the strategy? Because all these things have to happen before that becomes the truth. I don't know if that makes sense. If that, it does. Okay. So how do you, when you're coaching someone and you're trying to break those levels yeah. or layers, excuse me, mm-hmm. how do you know? I, well, you've, you, you've done it to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if every coaching session you have, you go from, well, you probably do go from, you know, just from God to, <laughs> to the person. But, yeah. you know, I'm sure you've had some secular clients. Yeah, yeah. How do you know? Because there have been times, like, in, in a retreat, you'll ask a question, you'll single me out, and then you'll be, that answer you're about to tell me, that's not the one I want. I want the first answer. And I'm like, so what you're not going to do is, is get in here. Like, like you are not, you didn't knock, you just popped in my head. Yeah. Okay. So how do you recognize when someone's not... When someone's about to mask up, essentially, yeah. and give you the answer that they think, or like, how do you know when you need to break that soil? When you're like, I'm not in the soil. I'm not deep enough in in the dirt yet. There's a there's a couple ways. One, Holy Spirit is a great guide and helper. So if I'm in a situation or a coaching client that's a believer, I pray. And I ask Holy Spirit to give me discernment about what that person needs to hear Mm -hmm. and what needs to be unlocked in them. So I don't do it ever alone. It's not like I just come out of my head. That ain't how I rock. Um, And even if I'm with a secular client, I'm still asking my faith, my believer, Mm my I mean, my 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 guide to help me even with them, because I still believe that God created them, whether they believe it or not. Mm -hmm. So um, that's one answer. The other answer is most people don't give you their first answer the one that they heard in their head is not the one that they're willing to be vulnerable enough to share period i may ask you how you feel about your husband right now on this moment right and the thought that comes in your head (laughs) may not be the one that you want to put in the microphone out to this on this podcast Um, right more than confident it's not (laughs) i'm very confident you know what i'm saying and so that's not a that's not a like trick it's like we don't we're not vulnerable anymore we're not transparent anymore we want to create an image and maintain an image and so i'm like please don't give me that answer so i just cut that off before they even do it because it's like a waste of my time like i got places to go with you i desire to get you unlocked so that you can move that's gonna waste our time don't do that to me please don't do it to me I mean, you can try, but usually there's also indicators that that ain't the truth because your body tells on you as well. So working in higher education and working with college students for the last 10 years, reading people's body language is what I had to do. I had to determine if when the student was in front of me and I asked them how their day is going and they're like, oh, I'm fine. And their body language is like, and they said, I'm fine. And they sunk. That little bit of sinking. First of all, when you say, oh, I'm fine. F-I-N-E means feelings I'm not expressing. So miss me with that statement altogether, right? Your feelings I'm not, I'm fine. That's a cop out. Um, but usually your body language will tell on you. Like if someone says, oh, I'm great. And they nod head up and down and they say it with an inflection that goes up, then they probably are great. And then I'm like, tell me what's been so great. And they should be able to go into stuff that's great, right? Because it would line up with their truth of their, how their body showed up. Right. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that tells me how to go deeper. I didn't know that I could see all of it all at once because I didn't realize God was training me all my life in different ways to see face expressions. I used to mime. I know people are like, what? How did we get here? In church, mime. Okay. Praise dancing, mime. I thought you were like on street corners. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> No, no, okay. um, not that. Thanks Praise for the dancing. clarification. It, yes, mime in church, yep. Um, but in learning how to mime, you had to express your emotions without words very well on your face to, to convey the emotion of a song or what was being said. So practicing in rehearsals, and you got to make your face excited with your eyebrows and uh, or make your face look confused with your one eyebrow up. And all of those things were a part of the practice. That was like... Eight years old on up to like 
21. So that practice, never knowing that I'm in the mirror practicing to convey a song or a message, I'm learning how to see those same facial expressions on people in micro ways when I had to do them in macro ways. So it's a setup. I always say God's a setup God. He's like, yeah, I put you in that. You enjoyed that. You like that. But that's really for this purpose so that you can help this person get free because when they make that face and say, I'm fine and they sunk, sink in their, their chair, you just go ahead and say, you're not though. So what's the truth? And we just go from there. So, wow. Do you have a question? No, I no. Just you mean you go ahead, keep going. <laughs> Why you say wow, David? I'm just, just, I'm just but wow. you, you come on. You know that you've seen somebody. You can tell it's not even. You can do it without yeah. you knowing that you're doing it because we're all human and we all express in different ways. But we're all human. Yeah. And so you're and picking you're married, up on, like, you, and you're married. You got to pick up on. You got kids. I do. And so paying attention to even their little bodies are giving you things. If you, if Savi comes in here and she looks sunken in, something is wrong. And you're going to ask her, you're going to be like, are you all right, babe? You okay? You would pick up on it and move in that direction. Easy. Just with adults. I have two questions and I'm trying to decide <laughs> which, one, which one I want to ask. Shoot, I'm going to sip this water real fast. Um, so you touched on miming. Mm-hmm. Did that ability to mime help you with your mask? Oh, yeah. Duh. Work double-edged sword, right? Like, two ways. Yes. Because I know how to convey the truth of a message of a song, and I can manipulate it as well. So, yes. Okay. My, my other question, yeah. which is, is a deviation. So, you're young. Am I? Yes. You're still hip with it. Okay, thank you. Because um, there was a while I thought you were younger than me. And then when I found out you were older than me, I was Girl, like, Girl, I am 30, 33. 33. So not by much. Um, oh, you and him are the same age. Come on, 33. Jesus year. Okay. Shout out. Shout out to <laughs> um, all the 33-year-olds out there. Shout out. <laughs> so, you know, growing up in the church, you're, a, we didn't say it, but Leah is a preacher's child. Mm -hmm. uh, I, too, am a preacher's child. It's a fun life. It's, well, yeah. Is it? It's a great life. Okay. Um, Lots of therapeutic follow-up. <laughs> anyway, uh, I knew growing up from yeah. a young age, I was like, this is not for me. I ain't trying to be, I'm not trying to be a minister's wife. I'm not what? trying to be a minister. Uh, as far away from the pulpit as I can physically mm. get, that is my ministry. That's mm. how you, mm. I applied for, uh... <laughs> you better not. I was just playing. I'm and just there was playing. a brief moment where, you know, someone you had... Wait, no, 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 run what? that back. You applied for what? Nothing, not. I'm just playing. Somebody oh. had said, oh, David's got a very minister like pastoral uh presence about him and i was like no no he doesn't he just he's just got a soft demeanor just just leave him alone don't don't put that in the atmosphere like i, I pull it to, no I he actually him. does have stop that okay um <laughs> why are you trying to why are you trying to keep me from my destiny to, come on you, you that's not your destiny <laughs> don't eat look look i'm not the disruptor but i will disrupt this <laughs> Dis disrupt them this by, right here disrupting my calling <laughs> So, in a way. so growing so up, I just knew like just the stressors of, of being a minister, yeah. watching, witnessing that, yeah. um, seeing what it was like for my mom as a first lady, you know, just the disappointment of church. You know, you go into church on Sunday, you don't know who's going to show up. You don't know who's not going to show up. You yeah. don't, just the dramas that there's a lot that goes into it. Absolutely. And then being a child and having to be a, almost a recipient or a punching bag when things don't go their way because that's who you're you're coming home to them you're living in this yeah i knew for a fact i didn't want anything to do with with ministry yeah but i also had this understanding that to be in ministry you had to be old so i was mm. really like because and mind you i'm a kid so everyone is older than me so Thanks. i i never thought about it was two things i never thought about like being young and being in ministry. Yeah. But I also, the young people in ministry were always weird. So <laughs> that's just me being frank. Like no, were, I love it. They, no, were, that's they right. were awkward. They were weird. And I'm like. 12 year old preacher. Just, and just You're all doing the, too yeah. much. Why are you wearing a vest a whole, and suspenders? Come on. Like the suit's too big. The jacket, sir. Why really? are you reading the King James version? <laughs> like, do you even know what they're saying? Yeah. Like, just get away from me with that. <laughs> so I appreciate you. Because I kind of got to this season in my life where 
So I went hot and heavy for God when I was... Yes, hot and heavy. Hot and heavy. <laughs> uh, what, like 23, 24-ish? Uh, but we were in a ministry where, aside from Jacynthia, who's our, our link, yeah. uh, everyone else was, shout was out grown. Shout Bailey. Shout, shout. Was grown and mature. Yeah. I'm not going to shout her out. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Their relationship is so... JC knows she's... Like, love-hate relationship. JC knows I got love for her. <laughs> so it's like... so. I kind of struggled with being young and wanting to enjoy youth yeah. and wanting to enjoy the world. And when I say the world, I don't mean elements. Uh, like I'm not trying to like be recreational and turn up all the time. I, I need to sleep too. But like Thanks. you want to enjoy life and not be bland because, you know, the depiction of Christianity that and part. being a Christian that part. is very bland. It's very untoasted white bread, no butter, no jam, <laughs> like more like sourdough bread. Cause uh -huh. sourdough is very like hard on the outside and it's just like, what does this taste like? Um, so see being around being part of in touch and being there's around a there, there's a question here right i think so okay. we're just gonna just, I'm, I'm gonna talk until a question mark shows okay. up I just make sure uh, and being a, around women like you it's okay see now see, see i don't know, I don't know if this I don't is, know is a, I I this is a question or are you just making a statement like it's, you're I giving think her it's a compliment a statement with the anticipation that she'll be able to know did you just sit there <laughs> um <laughs> See, you don't throw no, it no, off no. the whole. I think that where you were going, I, if I please, please, no, take no, over. if I if I am I'm hearing sorry. it correctly, like you didn't want Jesus at a young age. You were like, this is not for me. And to see me at thirty three, possibly within the last, I should say, five or six years, really being intentional, like possibly a question could be, what made me say yes at this age, or did I ever think that? Being a pastor's daughter, I didn't want this. Let me just say my answer to these things. Being a pastor's kid, I did not. The P word. Mm -hmm. We're not that. I'm not that. Don't call me that. I don't want to be a pastor. I, I don't want that title. I don't want that weight. I don't want that responsibility. I don't want to be somebody's first lady sitting on first row and have everybody's eyes on me. And every move I make, every single move I make is being questioned and critiqued. Miss me with the foolishness, okay? Um no, I didn't want it. And so I ran and I rebelled. In fact, because I was a part of the first family in church, right? Mm -hmm. And let's be clear, we're talking about black people church. We ain't talking about Methodist, no, no shade. I'm just saying that's not how y'all roll. So um, I, I recognized that that wasn't the life I wanted and I rebelled. And so I did everything opposite of that. If you knew my story, please don't look at my face and think that this is what it all looks like. It ain't. Um, and so I rebelled and ran from it. And then I somehow got brought right back to it at the end of the day. Um, I've only recently accepted that I'm called to ministry when I decided to say yes to God fully and saw how he was using me. And when I saw the impact of my gifts, when I saw the impact of um, my yes, and then to see people's lives literally change, not, and at first it just started with college students, mm -hmm. college students coming back to me and being like, yo, you were my boss and you were the best boss ever because you really, in our one-on-one -on -one discussions, you really got me to see myself. And I was like, oh, that's what I love to do. Then come in Bible and scripture, and now I'm doing it in a totally different arena, but the, the product or the, the process is still the same. I was like, oh, I really could do this. And I had no idea that I, being a pastor or being a minister, being anything in the church did not have to be, what'd you say, bland, mm -hmm. toast, toast bread, sourdough, sourdough bread. Yeah. Like I didn't know that it didn't have to look like that, that I could authentically be me straight up. No chaser. Didn't have to put on another type of mask to just do what God has called me to do. And that's when I learned that I could do ministry and not be in the four walls of a church. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to be in a suit. Uh, you know, I didn't have to stand on a podium with a mic. I could do this. And this is ministry too. I could sit down and have a conversation with girlfriends at dinner and have a glass of wine and some cheese. It's a good charcuterie board. Shout out. I love a good charcuterie board. She does. I do. Um, I love cheese. I miss cheese because I can't have cheese right now, but. Anyway, so I could do that. I could have a conversation with a group of women 
and we just pour into one another. And that I realized was ministry. And that's when I said, okay, I can do this. Mm -hmm. Cause I ain't got to look like, I ain't got to be in nobody's four walls of nothing and still be used by God. Wearing a suit. A suit I, like I love a good, listen, I love a good suit. Like a good pants suit. Have you ever gotten a no, white? But Sorry. A good one. I know this is like, David, but you're like, okay. what? I'm thinking like the old, old school. No, no, no. The no, Hillary no. Clinton joints. Yeah, yeah. No. no there are some that are worse the, than little, that. The little two inch heel. Like, the white, why do you, the white he- like, why do you have those on? What does that do for you? Nothing. Nothing. Just put, put on flats. Put on flats. Please do that. Anyway, so yeah, when I learned that ministry didn't have to look like what my parents did or what I had grown up seeing. I'm grateful that today ministry looks like a whole bunch of different things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I pause to give you an opportunity to chime in. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. I, um, can I pick your brain? Ooh. Uh, you Dude. can after we come back from this break. Does <laughs> oh, that work? Perfect. Yes. Can you hold on to it? Yeah, I can All right, hold on cool. to it. Cool. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. All right. So we're back with Leah and Nicole. On the Leah Nicole segment. The Leah Rush Nicole Rush segment. <laughs> uh, the disruptive, disruptive life coach. Is, is yes. that correct? Okay. Yes. Disruptive life coach. Um, so all of you all at home are getting a free session. So um, if you like what you see, I imagine we'll have a link where yeah. we can we can get to you on either social media or our website. And you can uh, feel free to uh, reach out to Leah for her disruptive services. So <laughs> That's uh, hilarious. We're, we're back. And I, I believe you're going to ask me a question. And yeah. we were just talking before we came back on a link between uh, Leah and, and Jessica is our friend Cynthia, who I believe was our first guest during Mompreneur in March, which would have made her, I believe, episode number 11 or 12 off the top of my head. And Cynthia came on and was trying to take over the podcast. And I didn't appreciate it. I let her know. <laughs> I let her know about it. But it was all in good fun. So Leah's about to do the Jacynthia and ask us or me question. So listen, I'm, listen, that's I'm my prepared. sister. I'm and prepared. I'm here for it. And I, so I, it's not, I mean, I don't think it's a bad question. You had to be okay with me coming to do this with you, right? It was my idea. It was his. And I wanted to know why. What made you say, because I know how we met, right? And sure. Um, I didn't meet you at the same, the first time I met Jess, because I was at an in-touch retreat when I first met Jess. Yeah. But at another in touch retreat, shout out. We listen. If you've never been to an in touch retreat, you should Dude. be there. We will link uh, the in touch yeah. retreat uh, <laughs> we'll <laughs> website in the description for this episode too. Do yourself a favor. Um, but we met at that at that weekend retreat, and it was before the weekend had actually gotten started. And when I, I was just like, "Yo, he's pretty dope." Like, I appreciate that. Yeah, thank and you. I remember, so do you remember that I got you? I was looking out for you, fam. You, you got me the, the Q tips. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember. He's like, man, I need some cute because I left my my other ones. I was I had just driven up from from Tampa. Yeah, to, and he was uh, like, I, I definitely don't Q-tips. have any. I was like, I'm about to go to the store. She brought me a Let, whole pack. Too. I got him a whole pack. Q-tips. Let's be clear. With the me. only reason I asked you on is because you bought me them Q tips. <laughs> don't do return, it. I was just returning the favor. Don't do it. And it's so interesting. I was most concerned about your dynamic. Really? Why? Um, I don't know. You always be thinking I'm a, I'm like scary. No, it, it, like, it's probably more a so lot of it of is him. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, <laughs> it's no, 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 no. It's me. It's because of me. Because <laughs> I feel like a lot of times I have to, qual- I have to like pre-qualify him. He, I, I, was, I was telling um, earlier today because we had the retreat today. Yeah. Uh, I was telling Deanna, I said, sometimes I have to qualify him like you would qualify a kid. So you know when kids like how anytime Savi is around, you like, and, she, and I'm like, she's just, just, she's, just, she's just. I have to. I feel like I have to be like, he's just, he, it. So I was really curious because one, I was like, I don't know what's gonna come from above <laughs> and then come out and how he would receive it, mm-hmm. or because I knew something was gonna happen, utilizing your gift utilizing your job yeah as a disruptive life coach yeah and it would it would involve him somehow so i was yeah. definitely curious about that dynamic but when he suggested it he was like let, he was like see if we can have leah and even it was before he knew you were coming to the retreat so it was going to be a oh, yeah. zoom or whatever he was yeah. like, he had already said like like make it happen of course i had like forgotten and then I forgot again. That's pregnancy And then brain. I forgot again. Yeah. No, it's just and Jessica Brain. Like, this is Jessica Brain. like, text her. <laughs> Playing that on my baby. He's like, Playing like, like text her right now. And I said, well, you know, let me see. She's going to be in town for the retreat. Let's see if we can make it work. But anyway, continue disrupting. Yeah, I, no, no, no. I, I wanted to know because I was like, I, I didn't know that part. I just knew that you both had to be in, gre- in agreement. This is a thing that you're doing together. Sure. So 
what made you say, let's do this or bring her through, come through? Well, we needed, um, we needed, it had been a while since we'd, we'd had guests. So yeah. the tough thing is, is finding people who you one know, but also feel like can bring some sort of value, right? Like you don't want to just bring people oh, on to part. just, just have people on. I mean, we could do that, but you know, I, I, my hope is that, you know, though our, our audience, our following is relatively small now, you know, at some point we'll grow right? yeah, and then absolutely. the the stature of the guests grows, but people can go back and look at your earlier episodes and still find those nuggets, right. And still get, still get value out of it. So for me, it was, it was bringing in someone who would be dynamic on, on camera and with, with their voice and their words, um, <laughs> someone who uh, could present a general message that could, could reach other people and affect their lives. And if not, you know, uh, encourage them to seek help in another another avenue or yeah. reach out to you directly. I mean, I just felt like you, you'd be the perfect person to have on. Um, and we and we know you. Yeah. Um, albeit, you know, indirectly, directly, however. Um, and I just thought that it would be it would be, you'd be a great person to have on. Um, and you obviously made an impression on me during the, the, the retreat. So um, and I'm not I'm not I'm not going to say I'm like hard to impress, but I am naturally skeptical of of people. You see, did you see? Yeah, I, okay, I, okay. I, well, I already know that that's going on. <laughs> um, I, I'm naturally skeptical of people. Yeah. Um, and I'll be just be honest, especially church people, because it's, it's, it's a lot of people can can be fake who you run into in that, and I'll even call it that that line of business. So yeah. Um, you 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 definitely uh, made an impression on me, and I know what you've done for Jessica. So that was actually the what made me okay with it is because anyone who can be a value to her, be a, a confidant an ally, yeah. a, a rock for her to lean on who does treats her well, um, is always, always good in my book. Like you could have just been Lee and Nicole, not Period. disruptive life coach. You could have yeah. been Lee and Nicole. And I'm like, all right, do you crochet? Do you sew? Can we get, do you have something we can like, yeah, so we would add you on regardless. <laughs> um, but yeah, the fact that, that you've helped her through some, some pretty tough, uh, questions that she's had some pretty tough moments um some things you've kind of helped guide her through some some rough patches um it just it was the icing on the cake for me um but it i'm learning more about you now and i just feel like it's it was perfect for you to, for you to come on so thank you yeah i like your brain so i'm always like what's going on you don't you know you you talk sometimes but like there's so much more inside your head going on and it's i'm always like let me pick let me ask yeah, I, That's I, don't, why I asked a whole bunch of questions at the retreat. I was like, can I get the guys together just yeah. so I can pick their brains? And I never. Well, I don't I don't I, I try to be I try not to speak just to talk unless I'm talking to you Jessica. Sound like my, you sound like my husband. Unless I'm talking husband. to her because she Especially tells me to shut up. Open a book to so uh, annoying. Yeah. Well, there's one thing I hate. Right. Like I I'm I'm a manager um, yeah. in, in a very corporate culture, although it's 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 not so corporate, but relatively corporate. So there's meetings and then there's people who get on and they wax poetically about whatever. And it could have been an email. Like I, I'm not someone <laughs> life is, life is too short. Email. Yeah. Life is too short. Life is too precious for us to just waste time saying things that don't have any like true value or weight to them. Um, so I try not to speak unless I actually have something that I feel is, is would contribute to whatever conversation is going on. I don't need to talk about myself. Like, you want to know about me. Like you said, ask the people around me, go to my Facebook, go to yeah, my Instagram. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm very simple, um, or, or very straightforward. Excuse me. Not, not simple. Say you're not <laughs> um, no lies. so I, yeah, I try. That's why I observe much more than I, than I speak. Um, but that's so good. But I, I, unless I'm, of course I'm talking to my wife and then she's just like, she'll, she'll put her book down and just be like, <laughs> are you done? No, but that's good. He's I'll supposed listen, to talk. I'll, I'll and listen. This, but it's always like, it's like, he, and the books are silent. So when you, oh, it's, but it's like when he hears the book crack, he's like, yeah. Jess, have you seen this on Twitter? So then I, I close it and I, and I listen. Yeah. And then he's like, yeah, that's wild. Okay. Okay. And so, so Jess. Yeah. <laughs> no, what I appreciate about that is that, um, one, that's my husband in all the words you said. Um, and I didn't quite understand it at first because I was like, you ain't got nothing to say. He's like, I mean, I have lots of thoughts, but nothing that needs to come out. And, right. I, and I was like, come on. But he married a talker. I'm, mm -hmm. We're the talkers. And yeah. so <laughs> and so, I always got something to say. Whether I'm thinking it and I'm still processing it out loud, he's definitely like you. So I'm always like, let me talk to another person that reminds me of oh, yeah. him and see if I can get some insight. 
Because yeah. I'm always trying to learn the, more about the man that I've married and also how we're, we can grow together. So I'm like, let me. you remind me. Let me ask some, some questions. But he might flip on you and become a talker. Listen, there are times when he's excited about something. Yeah. Because he'll go well, off and I'm like, so well, when I, we were dating, you didn't talk. So I, I feel bad because like <laughs> when we're, we're on the podcast, that's our that's our element. That's our yeah, date yeah, night. Yeah. That's our zone. We we obviously have good good chemistry and good rhythm. So we, we bounce off one another. But we have friends who we hang out with, who hang out with us individually. So more recently, I've been hanging out with um, Pastor Bob and playing basketball. Bobby. And and he comes and picks me up and we'll ride. It's about a 20-minute ride. Yeah. And Bobby dominates the conversation. And I feel bad because, one, it takes me a while to warm up to people to get to that point where I can just we can just talk like, you know, yeah. like we've known each other our whole lives. Um, but if, if I'm in a situation with someone who it's just obvious that they're the dominant either personality or just, you know, they're, they're a talker. Yeah. I just let them go. Um, and I feel bad because people, they watch us every week for an hour, hour and a half and we'll just talk and just constantly. And then I get in the car and I'm just like, I ain't got nothing to say. Nothing to say. So <laughs> hopefully Bob, if you watch or you listen to this, you know Let's that. call him Bobby. His but it's, name it's, is Bobby on Facebook. Yeah. I'll, I'll open up at some point, but yeah, it's, it's interesting, but for the most part, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of like my dad and then and then his father uh, before him were just really quiet, especially in like a social scene um, and just observe and, and kind of speak when spoken to. But um, that also drives her crazy, too, because she'll tell you when we go out and people <laughs> they'll try to they'll try to like, well, everybody have the conversation. And they realize, oh, there's this person over here who's been quiet. And they were like, See, so, David, one, so, David, so David. Come talk. Come talk. How was your How was your day? And don't ask me a yes or no question yeah. or or First straight of all, like. Don't give me a close ended question. Yeah, like, like it was good. It's great. <laughs> and it was. It was like, straight. What do you do? And then he'll tell you what he does. And that's it. I work. <laughs> no, I work. Come on, I, I, man. I work forty hours a week. But I think the preacher's kid in us. Yeah. We are your your dad will guest preach somewhere you're put in situations where you you don't have the option to be quiet nope. you don't have the option to be shy i hated singing in public did i have the option to not what every time that so i got to sing jessica can sing jessica sing no jessica jessica does not want to sing she she's venting at this moment she's so getting it's that off like, her chest we have yeah. been trained we have been ordained yeah. unintentionally unintentionally to talk. yeah to speak yeah. and then to also you know you get a guest at the church and that guest you, has a kid it's you are now the ambassador to you know because if you welcome the kid and the kid is comfortable go play with them so, and go make so it's like it's it's a default to sounds, talk sounds miserable that, sil <laughs> that silence is uncomfortable so to know Ooh. people to think that it's like oh there are people who can like just be quiet like not doing something and be quiet be in the midst of others and be quiet that's it doesn't feel healthy oh, to me. Oh, Jess, you just hit on something. You said silence is uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. I hate silence. Oh, see, I I used to. And then I've learned to value it. I love it now. I I think it's interesting. When you said that, I was like, is silence uncomfortable? It used to be. For me, it's not anymore. Silence is amazing. But it's you're amazing. unmasked. And you're, yes. you, you have... And self-aware. Shift, you've shifted. But yeah. when you're used to ha the cost of chaos... Yes. And you're used to something always happening around you when it's silent. You I know I personally I worry. I wonder. So mm. like we'll get your into, mind is rolling. Yeah. We'll yeah, get yeah. into tiffs be, simply because of his silence where it's like, OK, he didn't respond the way I will. like I'll ask him a question and he's like, mm hmm. What do you mean by mm hmm? What? <laughs> First of all, why can't mm hmm be mm hmm? It's not an answer. It's not a word. <laughs> or like I'll ask him. How, I'll be like, oh, how was dinner? I'll make dinner. Ask him how was dinner, and he'll be like, mm hmm, mm hmm. What? <laughs> so mm hmm, like there wasn't enough salt. Mm hmm, mm hmm. There wasn't enough pepper. Mm hmm. It wasn't good. Mm hmm. It could have been better. Like, what? What is mm hmm? <laughs> so she like, feels the type of way. I I like. But I'm I'm used to busyness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I need noise. Mm. I need sound. So s complete silence is is not is not a comfort for me. Uh. So him being in terms of and he's not he's not a quiet person. Sorry. He's not <laughs> like there are, there. It all depends on where he is. Yeah. But that makes me uncomfortable. So like mm. I'll listen to him on a phone call with someone, and in my head I'm like, why'd you pick up the phone? Because he'll like they'll be talking, and he's mm-hmm, okay, yeah, 
So like it's it's just so monotone, and and I want to just jump in and be like, well, he actually like loves this and he's enjoying it and he appreciated I've that gotten, you sent this to him. I've gotten so many lectures from her after I've gotten off the phone with someone. She was like, you know, you were being kind of rude. You were just so when we came. I mean, if you were talking to me, I didn't feel but like. But I'm also like empathetic, I'm so I'm like, if I was on the phone with someone and yeah. that was the response I was getting, I would ha- I'd be like, well, it sounds like you're you know you don't feel like talking. You're busy. I'm, like, yep. I'm gonna let you go. <laughs> you're but, right. So it's like. Thanks for it makes me I, thanks for like, taking, like, take, thanks for taking the context clues. Like if he's on the phone and the phone is on speaker, I can't be around him because I'll hear that person's enthusiasm and then I'll hear his and lack you wanna of ma- enthusiasm. And you want to match it? I, that's me. I'm a mirror. Mm. So the energy you give me is the energy I'm going to give you back. Yeah. I so I the questions I have rolling in my head like why does it have to look like that though? I think more. I yeah, think for me. It's confirmation. What's the opposite of rejection? It's acceptance. Okay. If the energy is being matched, if the response matches, then I, you've accepted how I'm communicating with you. But what if their response to you doesn't mirror yours, but still means that you're accepted? If it doesn't mirror mine, it doesn't mean I'm accepted. Mm, but what if it does? But it doesn't. Ah. <laughs> And so, but the thing is, I can accept it with other people. Just not this one. Just not this one. Ah, that's a whole nother. So, like, I need you to match my energy. Yeah, yeah, that's a whole nother. Like, that's a la- that's, that's a different a whole layer nother, in yeah, a different a whole soil. Nother, yeah, it's yeah, a different yeah, that's part a whole of the different. garden. Yeah, that's a whole nother pot. That's a whole nother. Marriage is a whole, a whole nother episode. Marriage, okay. And I you're wanna... a newlywed. She's a newlywed. I am. Ah! Uh, I've actually known Leah in three Thank stages. You. I've known dating Leah with. Single dating Leah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, engaged Leah, yeah, and married Leah. So all still in the, still in the less honeymoon phase. Than a year. Well, you've been how long were you dating? We dated for a year and a half. Oh, year. so y'all are still in that honeymoon phase? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yesterday, what? when I I got into the hotel room and I was like, "How's your husband?" The light. <laughs> she. Yeah. I hope he watches this segment. She just, lit up like just, uh, she didn't even have to use words, and I was just like. Oh, everyone just, said that. I was like, you, I, I, "It's great." Like it. you, your cheeks rose. A glow came from within you. Your smile, and I was just I, like, I, "I, I really, really like him." And um, I can just, say, I, just give it time. It'll don't, do <laughs> don't do that. Don't oh, do that. Oh boy. It, it. He. Yeah, he's great. I, yeah. I like him, and I love him. Love. That's, awesome. always, that's an action. That's a decision. But. Like, I like him. He's in this. Now, let's be clear. There are times when I'm really like. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with you? Right. That's my thought. And and it comes out. It's not just a thought. It comes out. I'm like, what is wrong? But for the most part, we're only four months in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really great. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about you and him. Give it time. Because you, because <laughs> you, everyone playing. says that. I've, no, I, and you know what's funny is, um, marriage is like, especially in in our our society, it's like people are so in love with it. You know, like I thought the grandparents, parents, oh, when are you getting married? Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's such a it's such a destination that so many people seek. Oops, um, but me. then, but then you talk to like people for some reason they they make it seem like it's so miserable and everything for especially people who have been in it for so long. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's it's almost like just the thing to do when you can sort of start doing it subconsciously without ever thinking about it. So I try to be really intentional about um, when people ask like, oh, how's marriage? Because, you know, we're seven years and yeah, that's this year. Different. Yeah. Um, and that's I think that's okay, right guys. around the time that's like the seven to, year itch yeah the seven like, year when people are like most most marriages like fall apart or that's where they start you yeah, know like it, it starts to become like the, the the biggest challenge um I, I try to be very and not try like i have to force it but intentionally to, aware yeah, yeah. intentionally keeping those those things from from seeping in and, and then you just regurgitate stuff that you've heard people say all your life but no it's uh marriage is i think not that you asked me but i'm gonna tell you anyway yeah, no, but marriage is um is it's fantastic it's every day is, is a new day especially if you have like when you have someone my partner like mine who's just constantly evolving and growing and, and stretching and um and is expressive and is very dominant about what she wants and her her expectations um for someone like me like I, th- I feel like most people they see us out and about when she's in rare rare form. It's like why are y'all even 
Like he just sits there. Oh my there gosh, people say that about me and Marcus. Yeah, and she's. <laughs> but for me, it's like, like I wouldn't want to be married to me. Like, I'm Come bo- on. I'm boring. <laughs> I, <laughs> like I wouldn't like I, I, I me like I just be sitting here with myself like. And so we how both was your day? Look, yeah, it'd Good. be silent the oh. whole time. What you eat? Food. <laughs> <laughs> like, what you do? Go to work. <laughs> like, I, I couldn't do that. Um, it's a good balance. Yeah, and but it's also a challenge, and we disagree on this because I, I, I don't know what it is about the word choice, but it's also difficult because you're constantly you're growing, and that's tough, and that's right? work, and you're and, someone yeah. else is growing. And you may not be growing at the same rate and you may mm-hmm. not be growing in the same direction, Come but on, then sir. at the same time, you have to grow together. You might be a preacher. You have to grow together. So it's like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's pruning, it's stretching, it's, it's scraping your knees and it's like, it's, it's compromise. It's a, it's a lot of things balled up into one. And when I say it's difficult, it's not like a, a throw my hands up. I don't want to deal with the difficult. No, it's it's just- like, this is tough, but I see. I see the destination. I see, I, you know, I, I see where we're going. Yeah. Um, and I see who I am now as opposed to who I was. And I don't get here without going through a difficult Come on, sir. process. Yeah. A difficult journey. So I love it. No, um, what you said, man, first of all, let's be all the way clear. Marriage ain't for punks. Right. Like if you want to be married and you don't have any grit to you, any tenacity, any like fight in you. Mm-hmm. Please don't. Right. Like, don't waste your time or theirs. Right. Marriage or, ain't for punks. Or the states. <laughs> like. It's tax dollars. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, <laughs> like it, it's like don't don't do it. Um, I think what you said was so powerful because, um, I love the idea that yes, one person is growing and the other person is growing and they may not be growing at the same rates, but as long as you're both willing and uh willing and able to but really the willingness yeah to come together and have conversations as you all are making those transitions and making those movements that's all that it is marriage is a a mirror it's always been about showing you more of you mm-hmm. mm. and i think people go into marriage thinking that it's about ha- that person doing everything that they can to please me or i'm supposed to do everything i can to please them and it's like you can do that and that can be your focus or you can live life with this person, grow with this person and learn more about yourself through that person. And they're going to show you pieces of you that no one else could because what they're with you every day. Yeah. I mean, you might go away That's for so a weekend, true. whatever, but I think marriage is such a, um, I think when someone was like, Leah, when you say I do, what you're really saying is I do to more of a growth process i do to more of the stretching the pruning right i do to be made into the best version of me because someone is like you said pruning or buffeting or smoothing me out you don't like i said earlier today in our in touch group you don't become a diamond without pressure Mm -hmm. you don't there's got to be pressure there's got to be some fire there's got to be something and so like you said the person that you are today isn't the person that you were when you first got married and you wouldn't be this man today had you not gone through it. I I think marriage is great. It's work. It is difficult. It ain't for punks. That's the sound. That's the sound, but I wanted. Thank you. You're welcome. It is difficult. Yeah. Now he's going to use it again. (laughs) We had a whole episode where we argue and difficult. Well, you use the word hard. I said difficult. Pretty sure he said the word hard. It's difficult. You uh, tried to say it was hard work, and I said it was difficult. I I didn't like the idea of whether it was hard or difficult. Yeah. I didn't like that he said marriage is difficult. Yeah, you're right. Correct. You you did say marriage is difficult. And <laughs> He's like, see, <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in and figure out how to edit that out. Uh, <laughs> but I didn't like the idea of of him titling marriage as difficult. Um, I okay. I said marriage has difficult times it has difficult moments but marriage overall is wonderful yeah. you have if you've married accordingly you've married the right person you you know you've got a friend yeah there are things that you know if something happens good or bad this is the person i need to come and tell yeah and, and that you have to be able to exactly and if tell. we're in a situation where we can't now like where you know he's upset with me i'm upset with him busyness of life we haven't been able to like just sit down and unpack it's like 
I feel like I'm just always itching. That's like the only example I have. <laughs> but it's like I have a lifelong friend. Yeah. I have a best friend. I have a companion. I have someone that I always want to do stuff with. Yeah. That you have to be like there is someone next to you that you're able to do mm-hmm. these things with. Always. Always. I, you're never alone. I guess the reason why I, I disagree is because when I say marriage is difficult, I feel like you hear that and you say, oh, that means marriage is, means a person is difficult or I'm difficult. I can go the through concept. my I can go through my own storms and and va- and, and valleys and struggles yeah. by myself within a marriage and that be part of being difficult. It has absolutely nothing to do with you. Mm-hmm. But I'm married, so I have to learn how to go through those changes, how to go through that that yeah. get through that period and not totally affect you or mess up anything that we have going. So that's like part like it's it's a it's a totality. Marriage is difficult, yes. But there's like there's nuance to that. It's yeah. not my partner is difficult. It's the process of growing at a different rate as somebody um, or or with someone while finding out who I am, yeah, figuring wow. figuring yeah. myself out. Like and then that's, come on, children. That's difficult. Yeah, and kids like Those the whole it, it, the whole thing is is it, it's a difficult process. But difficult is not synonymous with bad or negative. Um, like there's a coach uh, for the Phoenix Suns. He he said a quote in the sun, in the finals this year. He said, "Everything we want is on the other side of hard." Oh, like, come on, sir. There's nothing I've ever had in my life that was that's just it. given to me that I have, that I, there's nothing in life that I've ever had that I valued that I yeah, didn't have to struggle, hard. work, and and grit and grind for. So, and really, it was a way of like it was it was a, a phrase of endearment, really, for me, because yes, our marriage is difficult, but yet. I'm still here and I, I'd, I'd rather, I wouldn't rather be anywhere else and I wouldn't be on, rather be on this journey with anybody else. Now she just heard difficult and she, and the walls went up and she, she, she broke out the sword and the arm and she was ready to go <laughs> She's at like, me. I'm ready to fight. What you mean? Yeah. yeah Cause but, I took it as I'm difficult. Being married to me is difficult. Nope. That's and not I know said. we have difficult moments, but it's like, well, dang, if you think I'm being married to me is difficult, well that's then why are you said. in this? Yeah. So it, it's, and I don't know how we got to us when so I was I, trying to talk about your I know. marriage. And I don't no, want to no. I don't want to be the party pooper, but when you go ahead and wrap up, um, so I'm gonna give you sixty seconds. Ooh. Um let us know where we can find you online, okay. your social media, your website, and um, you know, kind of what's anything we didn't anything get you're to working on, on that you want to get to the public. L- listen, there's not a lot to say. That really and truly I'm honored to be here. Um the biggest thing I want people to know is that it's important to do the self-work. Self-work is necessary. Self-awareness is a beautiful tool. Um, and if you need help, don't be afraid to ask. There are enough people out here that want to help you, whatever you're going through. Um, the things I want people to know that I'm doing. So I do this retreat called the Heiress Mentality Retreat. It is for women that are accustomed to pouring out to other people and do not get the opportunity to be poured into like the queens that they are. Um, My job is to remind them of who they are and treat them like the royalty that they are. And so in this retreat, um, you get the royal treatment, you get the massage, you get the facial, you get the private in-house chef for the entire weekend. Um, It's a luxurious experience for women that want to go deeper and want to be loved on and want to be poured into. And so that's what I love doing. Um, where you can find me. I, my name on Instagram is purposed underscore in underscore chosen, because I believe we are all purposed and chosen to do something great. Um, and if you want to find out more about me and my coaching, the heiress mentality.com, you'll find the coaching tab. You'll find out um, how you can get a part of one-on-ones or group coaching. Um, then I'm also at every in touch retreat there is. And so yeah, we'll um, in touch retreats too. Yeah, yeah. That's below. that's something that you want to be a part of. So I think that uh the last thing I want to say is I'm honored to be here and this was a great vibe. This was great. I appreciate vibe you. That's twice that you dropped the vibe pun and I, I appreciate, appreciate you doing that. Yeah. Thank you. So uh you we're gonna go ahead yeah and uh bring Jay Belkin. Um once again, uh connect with us on social media, Rush Vibes on Facebook, on Instagram, subscribe to us on YouTube, like uh, the video as well so it helps to show up for other people um, episodes every Wednesday we'll have another guest next week Chess you got anything just a pleasure so yes great. a pleasure thank you Leah we Always. appreciate you we love you um, appreciate y'all love y'all for tuning in we'll see y'all next week be good be safe be well peace peace I mean now yeah I done can't wait to fucking stop me now